is that, that that's the focus of your e research at the moment is kind of yep. the microbiome and you talked about how the microbiome affects uh muscle mass in uh, older adults so um so it's interesting i used to open my uh presentations with uh you know the impact of the gut microbiome on all the various tissues and organs in the body and just as recently as a few years ago um, the thought of the gut microbiome being able to influence muscle was an afterthought. I mean, it, it was pretty, you know, uh, well studied, you know, the gut microbiome, the effects on liver and brain and, you know, uh, even kidney, adipose tissue, immune, immune function. You know, I, sh I used to show data on a slide showing how the gut microbiome was, has been, you know, associated with various conditions all over the body, but notably absent was its, were its effects on muscle. So, uh, I actually didn't care about the microbiome at all when I first um, uh, started my post PhD work. Uh, I was trained, you know, uh, studying the oxidative stress theory of aging in both young and old mice. And then once I started in human studies after my PhD, um, I was using basically a metabolomic approach in blood to look for, you know, the signature in blood, uh, metabolite signature in blood of, you know, having higher or low muscle mass or higher or low function in older adults adult humans. So what I started, and, and again, at that time, 10 years ago, I didn't care or think about the microbiome at all. It, was an ap it wasn't a thought in my mind at all. So um, I started to notice that there were many gut bacterial metabolites that were significantly associ associated with each of these muscle-related measures. And then, um, and I should say too, my mentor, uh, I'm grateful to him for allowing me so much time to to really analyze these blood biomarker data in older adults, because uh, without that time, I would have never have even thought about this as a hypothesis. But, you know, it was after paper after paper, I started to see these associations between the gut bacteria metabolites with muscle related measures that I said, what if the gut microbiome is affecting? It wasn't even, a, you know, and I don't want to say I was the first. I mean, there were a few who were looking at uh, these things, but not as their primary focus. Like they kind of noticed it in studies as an afterthought. So, uh, you know, I, I got a grant funded to look at the role of the gut microbiome uh, on muscle mass and function in older adults. And we published the results of that study last year. And we actually found a few bacteria uh, that we think may be involved in, in, in optimizing muscle health and function. So I'm currently going after uh, several grants to hit that in two ways, um, one through diet and one through exercise training. So even how exercise, exercise training, obviously, it's well known to impact muscle. And ex separately, exercise training is known to impact the gut microbiome, but how exercise training impacts the gut and how that gut in that process impacts muscle is un pretty much unstudied in older adults. I mean, just because you see changes in a given bacterial species in the gut, that doesn't really tell you how that species is impacting muscle. So I've got a couple of grants that I uh, submitted this year, hopefully that will, that will get funded. Um, so we can further elucidate this, this impact of the gut on muscle. Now, central to that hypothesis is, are these short chain fatty acids, which can be produced by the gut, bac uh, gut bacteria by uh, fiber fermentation. So the short chain fatty acids have been shown to positively impact muscle. And I should say too, uh, in 2019, there was basically a quote unquote explosion of gut muscle studies. Uh, there were uh, nine studies and I summarized these studies in a recent review. So if you're interested or anyone's interested, just uh, check out my review on the gut muscle axis, the 2019 update. So those studies really helped to fill in uh, a lot of the, the, the data in terms of animal studies and the effect of these gut, mic uh, gut microbiome derived metabolites on muscle. So the short chain fatty acids in animal models have been shown to be good for muscle. And so, but what's lacking are intervention based studies in older animals and in older adult humans to test that hypothesis. Uh, you know, so if you increase your soluble fiber intake and that increases the gut bacterial production, production of these short chain fatty acids, which have been shown in the animal models to positively affect muscle, do you get benefits in muscle related uh, uh, measures in older adults or older adult mice? Um, so that's one way, but then also there's um, one study in younger adult humans where they, they were exercise trained for six weeks and that also increased these short chain fatty acids in association with the improvement for muscle related measures. But again, the causative role of those gut changes hasn't been evaluated. So in another grant that I have submitted, uh, I've proposed to look at fecal transplant from the exercise trained older adult humans into old mice and uh, exercise uh, transplantation from people who weren't exercise trained into old mice. And if the gut is impacting muscle, we'd expect to see the transplant from the exercise trained older adults to positively impact muscle in the aged mice that got the fecal transplant from the 
trained older adult humans. So a lot of this story is still being sorted out. Uh, and that's just part of the hypothesis too. So the short chains acidify the gut. Um, when you acidify the gut, you alter the composition of the microbes and the bacteria that are in the gut, potentially reducing the uh, abundance of quote unquote pathogenic uh, species. And when the pathogenic species are reduced, you reduce, potentially reduce the production of metabolites that can negatively affect muscle. So the short chains may be important for not just directly impacting muscle, but also for uh, altering the composition of the gut microbiome to produce less species that can negatively affect muscle. So again, I've got a couple grants in submission. Let's hope that I can get them funded in the next uh, year uh, to, to, because this is gonna, in my opinion, it's gonna really, you know, uh, elucidate more of the impact of how the gut affects muscle. And I can even see a road where once we've got enough of that story uh, filled in or, or examined, you know, we may be able to have some therapeutics independent of using diet to specifically impact the gut or exercise specifically impact the gut. I can also see a road uh, for therapeutics to potentially turn off bacterial genes that produce some of the bad metabolites that would negatively affect muscle. Uh, just in, in support of that I, I, idea, there's a, a group that studies uh, um, stroke risk and thrombosis in Cleveland. And they actually gave a, a therapeutic that inhibited a certain uh, a bacterial enzyme that made less of a certain bacterial metabolite, uh, trimethylamine, and then that uh, reduced thrombosis risk, which is a major event in, um, I guess, cardiac death or cardiovascular disease, just by inhibiting one enzyme to produce less of that metabolite. So there may be a road too for therapeutics and the drug-based approach uh, you know, to inhibit the uh, uh, bacterial enzymes that are making these quote unquote bad metabolites that negatively affect muscle, which may be one, one way to, you know, uh, limit sarcopenia in older adults, in addition to the diet and exercise components. So I hope I can get, you know, these grants to really pursue this, you know, as much as possible in the next few years. But I should also say too, that uh, I'm hoping to transition into not just studying the gut muscle axis, but also gut brain um, to look at, you know, the effect of, you know, diet and exercise and even the, you know, the targeted approach of the gut microbiome to potentially improve cognitive function in older adults. So that's also on the to-do list in the next few years. Wow. Yes. Now that sounds, that sounds really interesting. I mean yeah. So for the gut muscle, uh, hopefully I can get that stuff funded in the next year. Um, and then after that, uh, there, there are two-year studies. So, I mean, we're looking at up to three years away. Right. Uh, science is slow. That's why, uh, I, you know, it, I, like, I like the personalized approach, you know, that I've got, you know, studying my own biomarkers because I can just go get my blood tested and then I can, you know, see the results instantaneously, right? Whereas doing big studies, it's got to go through the grant review process, which takes six year, six months to a year. And then recruiting subjects takes six months or more to a year. Uh, so, you know, group science is slow, whereas uh, individual health optimization related science can be faster. Okay. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.